Hello everyone, Inventor719 here, and in today's video, I am going to be showing you how to make this very cool and powerful Nerf gun, or technically whatever you want to shoot at the barrel. And before I start the video, I just wanted to say that the first section of this video, I was going to make it air powered. So that has a few parts that are only required if it was going to be air powered. Then as you can see, I converted it to be gas powered, um, which is easier, more powerful, and just a lot cooler. Um, so that's the second half of the video. Hopefully it's not too confusing to understand. It was filmed over a week, but nonetheless, please watch the entire video. Stick around for the shooting test at the end, as it is very exciting, and I'll give you a quick preview right now. Hello everyone, Inventor719 here, and here we are outside today for a very cool little build. So in today's video, we are going to be making a handheld air gun. And basically what you're going to need for this project is a variety of air piping, depending on what you have. It may differ from mine. Um, a barrel, I have a copper tube. Maybe a bit of piping, again, to, like flux piping, again depending on what piping you have. You're going to need a air source, like an air compressor, a bike pump or something, and potentially a drill, lighter, and various tapes and securing devices. First step to make your air gun, you want to make a air container, and for mine I'm going to have a thick one, thick pipe connected to a narrower pipe, connected to an end cap here, just like this. And when constructing this, I'm going to use some of this white plumber's tape to seal up in the grooves so no, no air can get out. There's my completed air tank, and on the end, I've screwed in a valve. Uh, it's a, just a little plastic ball valve, and you open it just by going like that. Uh, sorry, open, closed, and now for the barrel assembly. I have to have something that converts these threads into a tube. So we're gonna put that on there just like that. Again, with some of the plumber's tape. And then connect it to our copper barrel, just like that. So my issue with connecting the copper pipe is that they're the same size. And going metal to metal, it's kinda tough. So I got this little piece of hose. But, as you can see, even it is a little bit the inner diameter of the hose is a bit smaller than the outer diameter of the pipe. So what I first did was got a drill bit and drill out the inside a little bit. And then we're going to take a lighter, heat up the outside and try our best to squish it on. So here's the final product. Um, I have attached the barrel and I put two clamps on to make sure everything is airtight. If you want to test if it's airtight, open the valve, put some air in the end and make sure it doesn't leak. And quickly, here's our guest star today. This is my dog. Her name is Blackberry. She's a Lhasa Apsu. Anyway, let's uh, fill it up with air and get to some testing. Okay, so what you saw in the last few clips there when I was outside was this exact same gun except in the video you just watched, I thought it was going to be air powered and I was going to do that by pressurizing the entire gun, closing the valve, trapping the air in the cylinder, then when you want to shoot it, launch it like this. But due to a few leaking issues and uh, other stuff, and this is cooler, I decided to make it powered by some type of explosive such as an uh, axe or something flammable and explosive. So the only changes I've made 
are taking off this end cap, which you just saw was right here, and instead replacing it with a plastic PVC pipe that basically I pressure fit into the metal one right here. I wrapped it in electrical tape to make it look a little better. And then, on the end of that plastic PVC piping, I basically just, again, press fitted, they're not supposed to go together, but they work, a male male thread, and here's an end cap that goes on just like that. And then the firing mechanism, any of you that are familiar with spud guns will know, is a shocking thing from inside of a lighter. If you don't know what this is, check out my video on how to make a taser from a lighter. Explains how to get that out very nicely. And then simply, what I did here, it's actually underneath this electrical tape, so I can unwrap it to show you real quick, was there's two wires coming from the shocking thing, and I threaded the both of them around a screw. The other one's under there. And on the inside here, you have to make sure the screws are almost touching. So when you push the uh, trigger right here, it makes a spark. So the only thing left to do here is make a handle. I'm going to use this old pill container. And I'm going to put it right about here. So what I'm going to do first is wrap it with some electrical tape to give it a cooler color and make sure it doesn't fall apart when we use the Dremel to cut it. So here I've wrapped it up and now first there's this little lip that we do not want. So I'm going to start by cutting off the lip and then cutting two semicircular grooves, one there and one there, so that it'll fit nicely, as you can imagine, right on there. Now that I'm done making a huge mess on my apartment floor, um, there's our shaped handle, I guess you could call it. Very dusty, but that's okay. So that's basically what I did, so that when you put it on the round body, it fits pretty nicely, just like that. And it even has a little angle, just because that's a smaller diameter than that. So now I'm going to use some hot glue. Simply do it like I would when I'm welding it on. and. Uh, our gun is going to be completed. So I did a quick shooting test in the beginning of the video, but I'm gonna do another one now and explain how to load this gun. And we're also gonna be shooting some corks because I just found some of those. So what you wanna do when you're ready to shoot it is take off this little uh, butt plate, whatever you wanna call it, and then make sure the valve is in the open position there's close, there's open, so there's a free flow straight through the gun. Now, grab your fuel. Um, I'm going to use some axe here. I find it works really well because it, uh, it mists really nicely. Don't know how else to say that. But basically what you want to do is make sure you have a perfect amount of fuel and air. Too much of this, it won't even light. And not enough, it won't light either, obviously. So what you want to do is give it a real quick spray, just like that. Um, put the butt of it back on. You can close this if you're not going to be shooting it right away, like I won't be. Put your ammo in, let's do a Nerf bullet first, and then when you're ready to fire, simply open this up and pull the trigger to make the spark, combustion, and kablamo. Here we go with the shooting test. We're going to use some axe, spray it in the end, and then put on the backing here. Now we're going to put our Nerf bullet in, open up the valve, and uh, here goes our shooting test. That was, a, that was a very good one. Cleared my apartment. Let's get out some targets actually and see how it does. So for our last test here, we're going to try an alternative um, power source. So for this one, close off the cylinder. And what it is, is it's just a barbecue, sorry, a little cigarette lighter thing here. 
barbecue would work too. Now do it just like this so the butane will flow into the cylinder and just hold your thumb down just like this. You should be able to hear the fluid coming out. Hold it like that for a few seconds. Then go ahead quickly, close them up like this. Put your Nerf bullet in the end. And open the cylinder right here and you're ready to fire. Here we go with the butane in three, two, one. Very good. Anyway, as you can see, this is a very powerful gun. Sometimes if there's leftovers, you can do it twice. Not this time though. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. This is very powerful. You can shoot corks. I did off camera, worked very well. Um, you can use pretty much any flammable fluid and it's very fun, actually very heavy since I use metal components. And you can always swap out the barrel size if you want to shoot something smaller like airsoft, BBs, Q-tips, whatever you want. Or bigger if you want to shoot like, uh, I don't know, paintballs or something. Anyway, so that's that. Hope you enjoyed the video and as always, please like, comment, and subscribe.